Jai Gurudev and Jai Masters. Lately, I guess you all are going deeper and deeper because we've been talking pretty deep. Not just the deep inner understanding of what's going on, but what to do about it. So let's start with something that really doesn't get any deeper in terms of your sadhana, your techniques, your work, your practices. The more you grow, really grow, the more you're going to see that the ego is the problem. Mayor Baba said, man minus mind equals God. You're going to find that that's true. That when the mind gets still, when the mind is quiet, something very, very beautiful happens. A door opens and different beings have gone to different levels through that door. But the door does not open when it's closed. And the more you pay attention, the more you're going to see that ego is what closes it. That the self-concept, the preferences, the hopes, the dreams, the beliefs, just the whole little you, we'll call it the little you. It's not you, but the little you is what blocks the Shakti, is what causes the mind to be so active. You know that. You know, I don't have to teach you that. You know, Buddha said that you know, the cause of all suffering is preference, is desires. You know that. You know that when you want something, your mind is very noisy. You know when you don't want something, your mind is even noisier. Don't you know that? <laughs> okay? You just notice. Now, you haven't been taught uh, through all your schools, through your teachers, through your parents, through everything, that that's a problem. You know it's a problem because you're not comfortable. The problem is that you think the solution is to feed the monster. You think the solution is to give the ego what it wants so that it doesn't cause so much trouble. And every one of you know that. You don't frame it that way. Okay? If you want something, it's a problem. People say, oh, desires are beautiful. No, they're a problem. They're beautiful when you satisfy them. <laughs> okay? But if you have a burning desire inside and it's not being satisfied, you're not comfortable. So don't paint a picture that's not true. And if you have a fear inside, a major aversion to something, you're not comfortable. Now, should you get rid of it? Should you win the game? Should you pay somebody off? Should you run somebody away? Should you go away? Whatever it is, should you extricate yourself, either by extricating itself or extricating yourself from the situation, you're doing better. No one has ever argued that that's not true. No one ever argued that getting what you want doesn't feel good. At least no wise person has ever argued that avoiding what you don't want isn't a relief. The problem is you haven't changed anything. The next time it comes up, you're going to be troubled again. Next time it comes up, you're going to have desires again and preferences again. It doesn't go away by satisfying it. It just gets quieter because you satisfied it. And so the baby who's throwing a tantrum in the store, I guarantee you give the child what they want, they'll shut up for a while. <laughs> right? But you're training them in a ridiculous way. You're training them that if they throw a tantrum, they're going to get what they want. But it is true that if you give them the toy that they want or pick them up or do something they want, they're going to shut up for a moment, aren't they? But every one of you know better than that. But you don't know better than that with yourself. That's the funniest thing in the world. When you throw a tantrum inside, they do throw tantrums in there, don't they? You do everything you can to get what it wants. That's the same thing as the child throwing a tantrum and you solving it by giving it what they want. It is not going to go away. It just reinforces the entire pattern. But that's how everybody lives. They think that getting what they want is what it's all about and avoiding what they don't want is what it's all about. The trouble is nobody ever got anywhere like that. They just keep trying to get what they want and avoid what they don't want. Go check your grandparents out. Check your parents out. Check your children out. Check everybody out. Go to rich people. Go to poor people. Everybody is not okay. Therefore, they're trying to get what they want and avoid what they don't want. Now, of course, everybody wants different things and everybody doesn't want different things. That which turns you on turns her off. That which turned you on yesterday, turned you off today. And that's so easy to explain. Skinner did a wonderful job. He said, man is the sum of his learned experiences. That's not true. You are the consciousness that is aware that your ego, your self-concept, your psyche, is the sum of your learned experiences. That's why I said to you, you can want something today and not want it tomorrow. How? She's been really nice to you and she's everything you ever thought she'd be. She's so perfect, everything, right? That was today. Tomorrow... She says one thing that you didn't expect. One. At least you think she said it. That's all it takes, isn't it? And all of a sudden, it doesn't turn you on anymore. You're the sum of your learned experiences. 
you just won't believe it at the level that it exists. Every single preference and fear and aversion you have inside is a learned experience. You can't always point to it because it's going to be the sum of your learned experiences. But the point is, if you like a particular color, there's a reason. If you all of a sudden don't like a particular color, there's a reason. If you like a particular person, there's a reason. If you suddenly don't like the person, there's a reason, isn't it? And the reason is another thing happened that became the sum of your learned experiences. Can we, I can't go any further if you don't understand that. You did not decide what you like. You just noticed it. Where did it come from? Well, when you were little, you had a blankie that was blue, and they took it away too soon. Okay, we'll get into psychology. All right? They took it away too soon. You either hate blue or love it. You are not deciding these things. You are programmed by the experiences you've had. You don't know that because the experience becomes part of you and then you express it and it just becomes, you know, your heart opens. Why? Because it matched some experiences you had. You saw a movie once and it had a certain kind of dog in it. You've always wanted a dog like that. And now you met somebody that has a dog like that. You're in love with him or her. Not the dog, the person who has the dog. I tell you, you're that crazy. (laughs) Okay? And the dog runs away. And now you're destroyed. I don't know what to tell you. (laughs) All right? The psyche is the sum of your learned experiences. It's exactly the same as a computer is nothing without data. It can't do anything. It's nothing without data. And it's only as good as the data you give it. And all it does is rearrange the data. Well, your mind is a computer. It has taken in the data of your past experiences and your current experience, hasn't it? You don't have to do anything. You think it's a big deal you can talk to a computer. You think it's a big deal you can type into it. This computer in there just uses all your senses. You don't have to do a darn thing. It just comes in through your senses and programs you. Do you understand that, really? That's a very deep thing to understand. That's where the self-concept came from. It came from the sum of your learned experiences. That determined who you think you are. And who you think you are is based on what you like and what you don't like. If you ask somebody, who are you? Well, I'm the one who did this in the past, and I like this, and I believe in that, and I don't believe in that. What are you telling me? That you are your past experiences? No, you're the one who had your past experiences. Were you there before you had the experience? You were there? (laughs) Okay, you're experiencing it. Okay? It's like if you sit there and tell me, who are you? I'm so... We don't do it anymore. It's not politically correct, thank God. Who are you? I'm so-and-so's wife or husband. I'm Peter's wife. Really? How long have you been with Peter? A year and a half. How old are you? 43. Well, if you're Peter's wife, that's who you are. What was going on before Peter? You didn't exist. No, you're the same person. You're the same consciousness. You just had an experience that was strong enough to make an impression on you to now you're defining yourself as that. What happens if Peter's a bad boy and he runs around to stupid things? Now you're no longer Peter's wife. You got divorced. Who are you? I'm the person who divorced Peter. Or if you really got divorced, the word Peter doesn't even come up. I don't know what Peter you're talking about. <laughs> it's like he's the sum of your learned experiences. And you build this concept of yourself based on that. Let's call that the ego, the self-concept. What psychology means by the self-concept, I think certain things right. What is a concept? It's a thought. A concept is not reality. A concept is a mental image of something, isn't it? I always I play the game. What do you think a blah, 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 blah tastes like? A what? Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. What do you think it would taste like? Kind of blah, blah, da, blah, like, like a banana that's over fried. Well, make up whatever the heck you want because you don't know. It's a concept. Okay? So you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. You just, I'm there and I'm looking around. A lot of data is coming in. So which piece of data do I want to define myself as? I know who played Dorothy in the sixth grade in Wizard of Oz, and everybody clapped. Oh, that's who I am. You want to know how you know that's your self-concept? Go to your sixth grade reunion and have somebody else say she played Dorothy. And let's see what happens inside of you 30 years later. Ah! Yes or no? Okay. I give you little examples. You have to extrapolate into the examples that you can relate to, because it's true. So you built a concept of yourself by picking one from column A, two from column B, and either like or dislike. I'm the one that did likes this, and I don't know who so-and-so hurt. Oh, wait, you're that one, aren't you? I'm the one who my parents got divorced when I was little, and I hated my stepfather. And that's who you are, is it? And that's not who you are. That happened 30 years ago. What are you doing defining yourself as that? That's not who you are. I want to know, if you picked one from column A and two from column B and so on and so forth, and put together an image of yourself, who did that? I said, you did that. 
Who's the you in there that did that? Let me ask you a question. I told you we're going to go deep tonight. Has it ever fallen apart for you? Have you ever built a house of cards by picking one from column A, two from column B, and putting them together and gluing them together and sticking them together? And this is who I am. I'm so-and-so's wife, and it's so-and-so like this, and I'm like this, and I got an A in school. I always get A's, and it was this and that. The professor really loves me. I'm the, I'm the teacher's pet, and it was thing that we live in a really nice house. And I thought, okay, has it ever just gone boom, and all of a sudden, I don't even know who you are? Then you're really lucky, because it's probably the worst experience you had in your life, and it's the most important you ever had, because it proves that's not who you were. If it can fall apart, but you're still there suffering, <laughs> but you know what, what does it feel like when it falls apart? It's scary as can be. It's unbelievable. It's hard to live. It's hard to breathe. It's hard to do anything. You don't even know who you are, right? Who is it that doesn't know who they are? I don't know how to talk to you. You're still in there, aren't you? You're still feeling the pain. You're feeling the suffering. You're feeling the confusion. You're sitting there grabbing and you get your hands on to try and redefine yourself. People do redefine themselves, don't they? By the way, the house of cards we just talked about, that's exactly what Christ meant when he said, don't build your house on sand. He wasn't talking about a house he was talking about your real your house where you live in there. You do live in there, don't you? Okay? It's spirituality is a very deep thing. <laughs> okay? It's not some nice little thing where you get what you want. It's about understanding who you are. It's about self realization. So basically, you have built this concept of self and you know you have. And it's changed through the years because you have different experiences, you change, and so on. Who does have those experiences? Who is in there clinging to what you like and pushing away what you don't like? Who is in there? You're in there. Well, that is what witness consciousness means. It means the self, the Atman, the soul, the consciousness. I don't want you to talk about God consciousness. I want you to talk about your consciousness. That's where you start. You start where the rubber hits the road. Are you conscious? Are you a conscious being? Are you aware of things? Are you aware you're doing the stuff I just talked about inside yourself every single moment of every day? <laughs> manipulating this, pushing that away. Then you go outside and try to manipulate that so it's the way you want. It's very, very busy in there. Who's doing that? You are. So basically, spirituality is about realizing I don't have to be doing this. I will never know who I am if I'm always out there running away from myself and grabbing for myself and trying to be comfortable by getting what I want and avoiding what I don't want, I'll never know who I am. I'm very busy doing that, okay? And you know it doesn't work. I woke up early in my life, okay, in the 20s, and I asked myself, wait a minute, have I been doing this my whole life? Yeah. Have I my whole life been trying to get what I want and avoid what I don't want? Okay. How dumb do we have to be that if you do something every single moment of your whole life and you know you're still doing it before you wake up and realize it doesn't work. <laughs> what kind of thing? You do it for years and years and years every moment of your life trying to get what you want and avoid what you don't want and it keeps changing, you keep trying and you're just exactly the same. You're still doing it. And someday, that's what spiritual, that's what spiritual awakening. You have to have images and see things. You just wake up like, wow. Okay. So what does it mean that I realize it doesn't work? And what do you do if you realize it doesn't work? You realize that, yes, when I have times that are really beautiful, that it really is everything I ever wanted, and I feel tremendous love, tremendous joy, tremendous inspiration, and just a lot of energy. I'm up. Ever been up? We talked about falling apart. Ever been really up? You can just take on the world. Where is that coming from? Yes, you fell in love with somebody, but the love was inside. You don't feel the love outside. You feel the love inside. And they are not the source of your love. I don't care what you say. I'm sorry. I'm not that kind of romanticist. How do I know that they're not the source of my love? Because they say one word you don't like, you don't feel love. By the way, they don't have to say it. If they don't say what you want, you don't feel love. In other words, you're doing this. It's completely you who's doing this. You are either opening or closing. When you are open, you feel love. You feel joy. You feel energy. Don't you? You feel enthusiasm. I just got this new job, man. I just can't wait to go to work. It's so exciting. I've never had a job that I was so excited to go to. All right, wait till they change your boss. And somebody gets in and gets the corner office. You know, don't get the raise, and they do. See what happens. It closes down, doesn't it? It doesn't close down. It's just the job. You close down. Or you open. And it's as simple as that. And I've been through this in detail with you guys. It's about opening and closing. Opening and closing what? Your heart and your mind. Well, 
I like my heart when it's open. How about you? And I like my mind when it's open. Being able to handle things, appreciate things, respect things. You know, it's a very nice state, an open mind, an open heart. All right? Who closes it? Me. This is so funny. I close it. If he doesn't like something, then he closes his heart. He closes his mind. That's the ego. That's what I'm talking to you about. Why would you close when it's so beautiful to be open? Because you have a part of you that you have become addicted to that is the sum of your learned experiences. Your learned experiences are very nice. Yes, you've had experience. Everybody has experiences. But, you know, learned means past tense. They're over. You're not five years old. Your parents aren't getting divorced anymore. Your ex-husband was five years ago. It's like it's all over. But it's not over inside of you. Why? Because you build a concept of yourself based upon those experiences. And that's why it's still inside of you. Because you think they still matter. They don't matter. If they're not happening, they don't matter. There's not a reason in the world you're bothered by the past. Except that you decided to bother yourself about it. It's not happening. Why would you be bothered by what's not happening? It's not happening, is it? It happened 20 years ago. Why would you be bothered by it? Because you held on to it and you built a house out of it. I'm the one that didn't like that my parents got divorced. I'm the one that didn't like that my sister did this. I'm the one that didn't like my first girlfriend. I, do you understand that? You took these past experiences, and again, column A, column B, one from this, and you built this thing inside yourself. It's called the ego. It's called the self-concept. Oh, well, you got it down now? All right. It closes you. Nobody in the right mind would ever close. It's so beautiful to be open, but you will not be able to be